Hello people, how are you? In this video, let us look at tympanometry. Okay, basically we are in uh, assessment of hearing. We want to check whether this guy can hear or not, right? So basically, tympanometry is a test to check whether this person can hear or not. So you have seen so many types of hearing tests are there, clinical tests are there where you have tuning fork tests, right? Then you have audiometric tests where you have seen pure tone audiometry, right? You have already seen pure tone audiometry. Now in audiometry test itself, you have tympanometer. It comes under impedance audiometry, okay? So basically in pure tone audiometry and all you saw, uh, people can, uh, they can pretend like they can't hear. They may not even tell you that they hear, you know, they'll just sit quietly. But if you want to check whether that person can hear, it's an objective test. This is an objective test. There's no subjectiveness here. It's an objective test. So the person cannot lie here. So you're going to do tympanometry, right? So let us look and, and understand this tympanometry. So under impedance audiometry, you have two things, tympanometry and acoustic reflex, remember. In this, we are covering only tympanometry. So other than this, you have special tests of hearing, etc. Currently, what are we looking at, guys? We are looking at audiometric test, impedance audiometry, tympanometry. Okay, so let's get started. So here, impedance audiometry. So basically, guys, um, Oh, just listen carefully now. Impedance audiometry, what it is? It's an objective test, okay? And it consists of two things, tympanometry and acoustic reflex measurements. It is usually used for children, okay? So it's particularly used for children. Let's highlight this word now. It's an objective test, particularly used for children. Some diagrams here showing the three things, air pump, tone generator, and a microphone and a recorder. And this is a normal tympanogram. Normal tympanogram. So here what you're seeing, you're seeing some pressure here. And here you're seeing compliance. Okay, pressure and compliance. And whatever you're seeing in red, guys, whatever you're seeing in red, that is going to be the ear canal volume, right? And this is the middle ear pressure. So basically, tympanometry is based on a simple principle, okay? When sound strikes the tympanic membrane, where is the tympanic membrane? So whenever, this is the tympanic membrane, right? This you know, tympanic membrane. Whenever the sound strikes the tympanic membrane, some of the sound energy gets absorbed. Some of it gets absorbed and some of it gets reflected. Here we are concerned with the one that is reflected. How many people understood and how many people didn't understand the principle of tympanometry? Tympanometry means you're in, in, what are you talking about? Tympanic membrane, right? So some sound, whenever it hits the tympanic membrane, some part of it is reflected. We are discussing only the some part of it, which is reflected. This sound energy is reflected. So <clears throat> what will happen if, let us say, if this tympanic membrane has become stiff, what will happen if it has become stiff? It will reflect more of the sound. Right? So, it will land up reflecting more. Right? So, now just go back here and see that setup. See this setup. Right? So, what you see in this uh, setup. So, here you can see in the tympanometry there, there are three things. Air pump which is maintaining the millimeter of water. So, some type of pressure. Right? Then you have a frequency generator. Then you have something which will measure the reflected part. Looks like that is the recorder. So there is a microphone which will record the reflected sound energy. So this is the input tone generator, right? So three things are there here. One person is maintaining the pressure. Okay. So basically some pressure changes in the sealed external auditory canal. So here they are sealing the external auditory canal. Let us look at the images from the textbook. Here you can see they are sealing the external auditory canal. Types of tympanograms. So what will you plot here? The pressure and the compliance, right? The pressure and the compliance you will plot and you will get tympanogram. So this is normal. You will get a lot of types of tympanograms. So what do you think A is, guys? A is normal. That much you have understood. You have seen the normal. Okay, normal is simple, right? Look at AS. Where is AS here? AS is 
compliance is lower right so when will you see if there is fixation of ossicles otosclerosis malleus fixation right one thing you have to understand here the pressure is the same compliance only is lower so compliance is lower at or near the ambient pressure okay so this compliance is lower because of fixation of ossicles due to otosclerosis or malleus fixation something to do with the ossicles now let's move on to ad ad means what higher compliance right so when will you see it if there is ossicular discontinuity okay thin or lax tympanic membrane so when will you see this ossicular discontinuity thin and lax tympanic membrane so this is all at the ambient temp, uh, pressure only now let us look at something else like here you have a peak here right let us look at that b and c b guys what hap what's happening in b a flat or dome shaped graph no change in compliance but change in pressure so basically not much change so if there is middle ear fluid or thick tympanic membrane this is how it will be now look at c guys what do you see in c so when you see c right basically maximum compliance occurs with negative pressure so maximum compliance is occurring at negative pressure and this negative pressure is beyond this 100 mm of mercury okay more negative than that and why will this happen if the tympanic membrane is retracted or if there is some fluid in middle ear so retracted tympanic membrane okay can show this kind of curve where there is maximum compliance at negative pressure okay hope you have understood this guys tympanogram types so this uh, tympanometry has also been used to find the function of eustachian tube okay they will create a negative pressure or a positive pressure in the middle ear okay and then they'll ask the person to swallow 5 times in 20 seconds guys how many times 5 times in 20 seconds can you do it swallow 20, uh, 5 times in 20 seconds can you do i will give you 20 seconds swallow 5 times and see so is that possible okay the ability to equilibrate the pressure indicates normal tubal function okay so the test can also be used to find the patency of the grommet placed in the tympanic membrane in case of serious otitis media so if there is a grommet here in the tympanic membrane they can test that also the patency so usually this test they are saying they can use tympanometry has been used to find the function uh, of eustachian tube in cases of intact or perforated tympanic membrane they can find okay so what did you read about in this video tympanometry coming under impedance audiometry okay what do you mean by impedance guys what is the word this word impedance what do you mean by that impedance actually means resistance opposition so in this video we completed tympanometry tympanogram also okay so then we have to read what acoustic reflexes left so we will meet you in the next video bye bye